In this Photoshop design tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to design a simple blacksmith logo in Photoshop. So, hi guys, welcome back to a brand new Photoshop design tutorial. My name is Manny and in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to create a very easy blacksmith logo in Photoshop. We're first of all going to work with the background, then we're going to hit some textures on top of that, some shapes and a last color adjustment. Here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna work right away on the logo. Let's maybe turn off everything so you guys can see from start to finish what we're gonna do. First of all, we're gonna work just on the background. On top of that, we're going to add just a simple texture, some shapes, and lastly, some color effects just with a normal color layer. Very, very simple, anyone can do this. Okay, let's start right at the bottom. First of all, what I'm gonna do is actually go to the top. So we can start here, fresh. I'm gonna create a new layer from down here take the marking tool and select everything, the complete canvas with my marking tool. So selection is around the complete canvas. I'm gonna hit right click, say fill, and then over here with contents white, okay? Command D, get out of the selection. Again, if you're a Windows person, please press control when I say command. So for everyone now, control D, that is running on Windows. Okay, I'm gonna rename this, just double tap onto the layer. And I'm gonna say background over here. Accept that. And now the next step would be bringing in your background. You can either do this afterwards or before if you want. I'm actually going to do it right away. As you guys can see down here is a background layer. So I'm going to drag that all the way to the top just to show you guys quickly what it looked like. I'm also going to delete my mask over here. Okay, not apply, delete, there we go. Great, so as you guys can see, I'm also doing mistakes here. Just going really quickly through the tutorial. Take more time when you do this, please. Okay, so first of all, I've got background white and then background with the mountains. So what I wanna do is obviously we have a black text on top, right? So, or gray text. I want this to stand out a little bit more. So I wanna actually turn off the background here and just not have it as 100%. As you guys can see now, that's 100% actually. So what I'm gonna do is take the opacity all the way down to say 60, 65%, so that the white from the background is actually shining through a little bit, like I do in almost every tutorial. But if you're a newcomer, now you've learned something. Okay, on this layer, I wanna also create a mask. So I'm gonna go down here, select just a normal mask, not a hidden. You can also hold Alt, select this, and this will create a black mask, basically means everything is hidden now. Now I'm going to go to the brush, press B on my keyboard, and I'm first of all going to take the opacity from 100 to like 20. You can also type this in the keyboard, just type 2, and it changes directly to 20%. Okay, now I'm going to make my brush a bit smaller. I'm also going to press Control alt together. So via holding these buttons, I can now with my mouse go left and right in order to make my brush a little bit bigger or smaller, and also change the hardness if I go up and down. So I'm going to go up all the way, make my brush a little bit bigger, black foreground color, and this means now we're painting away. And I'm basically just going to brush a little bit over here just to make them a little bit brighter, also the mountains. And again, tap, hold on with the mouse, or if you're working with a pen tablet, then basically hold on to that. Great, so as you guys can see, I'm maybe gonna do it once more, so it kind of looks even with this side. Great, so that's basically all that I've done for the background. I'm gonna select both of these layers, press Command G, put that together in a group. Again, Windows people remember to press Control right now. As well, I'm gonna rename this again to my background layer, and that is set. So basically, there you go. First background already in just a few seconds. Okay, so let's start working now with the text. It's very simple as well. We first of all gonna have authentic works, then blacksmith, and also the smith, just as an extra. And here is again the black strip. Let's actually maybe turn it on so you guys can actually see what's happening. Going all the way to the top. And let's maybe start just with black and then smith. And then lastly, we're going to add the authentic works because I think we're going to use a few help lines for that. So let's turn off authentic, black, and all of that stuff. And just on top of that, I'm going to start with the new stuff. So take the text tool and make a big selection. And I'm gonna just write now black in capital letters, or B and then black the rest like that. Okay, first of all, I wanna choose my color over here. Maybe I'm gonna go for like a darkish gray color. Yeah, maybe not, a little bit darker maybe though. Okay, select that. And also I wanna select the right font for that, and that will be a very weird font. It's actually selected already. Hey, Schnittweiler or something. 
Hatton Schweiler. You guys can also find that in the description down below. I've added everything for you guys. Next step that I want to do is basically turn up this, the text height. So let's go with like 90, so it's nice and big. And I want to have this leaning. So I'm gonna go all the way to the right hand side to the character box. If you don't have the character box, please go to window and select the character box over here. Okay, so under character box, I will now put the leaning on. So basically it's just leaning a bit and going to accept it. So I'm happy already with that. I'm going to move that all the way down. Somewhere over here, we're going to place that still into the right position towards the end of the tutorial. Okay, next step that I want to do is maybe let's first of all take the layers out here. I'm going to move that to the top. Yes, I want to have you on top. Thank you. Okay, then also a brand new layer again with a new layer icon. I'm going to move that under black and take the marking tool. And I'm just going to make a rough selection over here like so. Okay, and this will be our black strip here. So again, hit right click inside of the selection, say fill. And over here under fill, we're going to say color. And now I'm going to pick the same color as I have on my black font here. Select that, OK, and OK, and Command D, get out of the selection again. Now, I'm going to use a little trick here to, in order for us to cut off the sides quicker. I'm basically going to select the pen tool just with P. If you guys are new to all of this, also have a look on the channel on more tutorials on how to work with the beginner tools like the pen tool and other cool stuff, canvas sizes and guidelines, all of that. Just have a look on the channel. Okay, so what I'm basically going to do is maybe start right here in the top, put an anchor point, and then go all the way down and set another anchor point. And as you guys can see over here now, it's not aligning so perfectly. So what I'm going to do is just go back to the pen tool with P, press Command Z, go a step back. This anchor point is still set. You can touch it again so you, the computer knows you're working from there. And then basically do this process again. Or you can also go back onto this anchor point, press backspace, and it will delete this path. But for now, I'm happy with this. I'm going to take the pen tool again, just make a few more strokes here or paths, and then completing the path, and now I'm going to hit right click, make a selection, zero feathering, OK, and now on my layer here, we can actually rename that quickly to strip, I will say delete. Command D, get out of the selection, and you guys can see that this has almost the same line as our black ready, super quick and super easy. Again, I'm going to do the same process for this side. Select the pen tool over here and over here. Wow, and that actually worked right the first time. And I'm going to complete this. Take a bit more time when you guys do these tutorials. Okay, zero feathering again, right click, feather, and zero feathering, hit delete, and out you are. Let's have a look here, that corner is okay. And da-da, we have our strip ready. Now, again, back to the text tool. And I'm going to make a big selection here. And just write now Smith. Um, and this I'm going to write in capital letters, yes. I do not want to have this leaning. So basically what I'll do is just turn off the leaning part. And I'm also going to make this a bit smaller, obviously. So let's maybe take it to like 50, 60, something around there, 56. OK, that was my previous settings. Now I'm going to take that, move it all the way down. And I can't really see what's happening here, so maybe let's turn it to white. I'm going to select the text tool again, select the smith, go over here, select a white color, OK, and accept it. And I'm basically going to move it all over here. Yeah, and I think I'm still going to make it a bit bigger though. So again, text tool, select everything with Command A. Again, Windows user, please press Control when I say Command. OK, I'm going to make this a bit bigger. So for me, in order for me to actually have now the smith at the top cutting out and at the bottom with the font, so it doesn't look like um, it's just inside of it. Okay, smith like that, and I'm actually happy with that. Now, if your background is almost like mine, completely white, you can leave it like that. Or if you have a different background, you maybe just want to cut out the smith and have actually the background shining through the smith. So let's actually do that. I'm going to go onto the layer here, hit right click, and say create a work path. So now you basically created a work path around your text. Have a look here. Now I'm going to go to the pen tool, hit right click while I'm in the pen tool, and go make a selection again. Also feathering the radius, zero, OK, and da -da, we have a selection. Now I'm going to go to strip and just hit delete. And now again, Command D, get out of the selection, and turn off the smith over here. 
and da da, the, you guys can see now we've basically deleted on our strip layer the whole Smith font out of that little strip. Okay, so you can still keep Smith around here just for in case if you want to still work with it. Great, so we've got that ready. Next step that I want to do is basically add some shapes on top of this. Uh, and last step, I will still add the authentic works right to the top. Let's maybe take strip, black, and the second smith here. Command G again, put that in another group. And I'm just going to write here text quickly. Great, so we have a second text. Um, let's maybe, so we don't get confused, have this as text one. We can also take that down again. Okay, so from text over here, I'm going to go to the shape tool, or shape library actually. This is right down here. Custom shape tool. And I've got tons of shapes in my library. I'm not sure how many you have, but if you want, my shapes are currently for sale. Just have a look down below in the description. I've added everything for you guys. So down here, I've got a shape, which is basically this hammer. I've also created this shape myself. Have a look on the channel. Again, there are a few tutorials teaching you how to create your own custom shapes. Now I'm gonna hold Shift and just make a big shape over here, something like this, not too big actually. Until I'm happy with the size. This also happens right away on a new layer here, as you guys can see, but it's still a rasterized layer. I'm going to take the hammer and move it over here. And first of all, what I want to do now, I want to give this the right color. So you can either do that while you here in the uh, application menu. So you can double click on here, double click on here to the color picker, and you select the right color. OK, and now your um, shape has the same color as that you wanted. Okay, I'm going to press Command, Shift, and H to hide these outlines from the shape. They irritate me a little bit. And yeah, I think I'm going to leave it like that. Take the Move tool, move that a little bit down again. Somewhere over here. Great. Now I'm going to press Command, J in order for me to duplicate this layer. So we have a double, as you guys can see. Okay, let's press Command, Z, move that back. But I want it to be obviously horizontally flipped. So select the layer, go to Edit, transform and flip horizontally. Great. Now, I'm not going to move it with my mouse because then you're getting the alignment is not right anymore. I'm going to press V on the keyboard and just with my cursors left and right, move the hammer until I'm happy and it's in the right position. Great. Something like that. Super easy. Then next step on this, create a mask quickly. Again, with Z, zoom in. Black foreground color. Brush again for B. Also make your brush really nice and small and as well the opacity, set that to 100%. And now I'm basically just brushing out this shape from the other shape so it doesn't look doubled. Great, it's like so, super easy and quick. Okay, last step that I'm still gonna do now is take the Move tool, move again, um, actually from over the left-hand side here and the top you've got these rulers. If you don't have that, so basically go up to View and select Rulers over here. Once you have selected Rulers, you can actually now go with the Move tool and take down guidelines. I'm going to move one guideline down here, one guideline over here, put it here onto the B for the anchor point, and one for the K, maybe somewhere over here. And that will be now with my pen tool, the path that I'm going to create. I want to have the authentic a bit lower, and then the top authentic should stop somewhere here. Great. With the pen tool, again, select the first anchor point and you have to start here. Don't start this side because if you're going to start this side and try to later work with it, your text will up, be upside down. So again, start this side and over here I'm going to drag it. Keep on holding until I found almost the middle section. Okay, like so. And now I'm going to select the text tool and go right over my path as you guys can see over here. Okay, so I'm going to select this and over here write authentic again. You guys can't see anything at the moment because the font is way too big and has a different color. So again, I'm going to select the right color, select it over here from our first font. Okay, and I'm also going to work with a different font this time. It's called intro. You guys can find it again in the description down below if you want. Okay, I'm going to make this super small, something around 9 pixels, 10 pixels. Nine, there we go. Okay, authentic, and I'm still going to write here authentic works or whatever kind of works for your logo. Okay, select everything, and I'm still going to set my tracking a little bit, so let's move the tracking over here on the right-hand side again under the character box. 
something to 350 or something, 320. Okay, let's make sure you type it out, 320. And I'm going to move my box, yeah, go to 9 pixels. Let's try that. Okay, tracking down a bit. So you have to play a little bit with this. I'm also rushing quite through this. But yeah, that's basically it. Select it. We're accepted there. I'm going to go to View, say Clear the Guides. And now I can still move stuff around a little bit if it's not centered right, like so. Or if you want, press Command T and just rotate this a little bit better so it's a bit more rounded. Or you can also create a really round path if you like. Great. So that's basically it. Again, last step here. I'm going to take the shape, also this shape. And let's maybe just select these two layers, press Command G, put that again in a group, call it Shape and take authentic work all the way down to text, somewhere over here, so your file is nice and sorted, so when you come back in the future, you have a proper sorted file over here. Now, last step that I'm still going to do is add a bit of a color on top. That's also super easy to do. Just go down here to the um, new adjustment layer icon, and you can add here a solid color, and now you can actually pick any color that you like. So you can also add the values down here, I'm just going to go with like a light purple or maybe dark purple. Let's try that. I'm going to hit OK and first of all send this blending option all the way to color. Great. Now it's super strong still. So last step, still take the opacity all the way down. So just add a bit of a color cost to that. And if you want on top of that, you can still add flares and other great stuff. Okay, yeah, so that's basically it for this Photoshop design tutorial, guys. It's a super easy technique. Anyone can do this in Photoshop, and it's really not hard. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to give me a thumbs up there. Share this with all your buddies who are new in Photoshop, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for watching, guys. I'll catch you all in the next tutorial. Want some more tutorials? Here we have some. Over here we have some. And at the bottom are some more playlists from the channel. Click the button.